What's up, slappers? Today, I'm gonna teach you how to slap that guitar around a little bit and show it who's boss. What is a slap? It's this. Now, that's what I call guitar slap edition. Featuring music from your favorite games and shows. Shovel Knight. Sailor Moon. Donkey Kong. Basically, it's smacking the guitar in some way with your right hand to mimic the sound of a snare drum, usually. Or a kick drum, but usually like a snare drum. It adds energy and drive to a song that needs it. So I'd seen like a lot of fingerstyle guitarists doing the slapping thing and I thought, hey man, that's cool. I should learn that myself. And I did. And it took a long time to get comfortable with it. They don't teach you how to slap in classical guitar school, which is I where, where, where I went. No, no, no. This is a cursed technique, but there's great power in it should you decide to undergo the teachings. So what's going on there? When somebody does a slap, what the heck is happening? How does it get that cool, crisp, whip, snap, crackle, pop sound? We'll have my slap cam right here to give you a better view of what's uh, what the heck I'm doing here, baby. Well, it's a combination of two movements of your hand and your arm. So it's a twist and it is a bigger movement of your entire forearm. It's not this, at least not the way I do it. It's n pretty much none of this is happening. Most of, most of the sound you're getting is a twist that's happening and then this part of your thumb right here this digit here for me it's quite bulbous all right i got a weird i got a weird thumb all right it's skinny and it gets real wide like a hammer dude that's why they call me the judge all right because i'll be smacking that gavel on that guitar so what you do is you're you're trying to generate power at that exact spot you drive it into the strings the strings then hit the fretboard um, they hit the metal of the frets and that's how you get that that crispy sort of like high-pitched snare type sound dang that's powerful now i'm gonna tell you how to get sick at slapping okay you're gonna start out by just working on the slap all right just working on that rotation of the wrist and a little bit of this with your forearm okay just like that and usually you're gonna be slapping the low string or like the the sixth string and the fifth string a lot of times my my thumb is coming down and it's hitting in between these two strings but uh you, you, rarely you're going to be down here right because these notes are going to going to be ringing out usually so first just try to get a good click of the string hitting the fretboard the next thing i would do is a chord and then a slap after like this Don't worry about making it perfect, but I just got like a normal D major shape right here. And I'm plucking the notes and you, you actually use that pluck as an opportunity to kind of bounce off the strings, set yourself up for the slap and then go in. It's like, it's like a whip, okay? So you're gonna play chord, slap, chord, slap, okay? So it doesn't matter what chord you're playing. You do open, that's fine. And try to make sure you at least have the G, B, and E strings ringing out and that your slap isn't interfering with the ringing of those tones. Just to get used to doing the slap motion, but then also maintaining good technique when you're playing the notes. I can't stress how important it is to do this and make sure you've got a good slap just in, just in isolation and just with the chord. The next thing I try to do is do like a bass and melody pattern with slaps in between it. So like, this is gonna be like pretty much random notes, but I'm gonna play bass, melody, slap, bass, melody, slap. Kind of like in, in any rhythmic setup that you want. A lot of times that's how it's going to be you're going to you're going to have to do bass notes on those downbeats mm -hmm. 
Now, what if you want to play a note and a slap at the same time? This is where it gets kind of tricky with the right hand. You're going to add a flick to what you're, you're doing with your slap. So first I'll show you what that looks like. So it's the same motion. It's a twist of the wrist. The thumb is still hitting the same spot. But what you're doing now is you're gonna take your index finger and flick outwards at the same time that you were hitting your thumb on the bass string. This does take a while. I remember this, this, this is pretty easy for me now, but it took a while for me to get to the point where, where I was comfortable with it. And I would work on doing the flick with your index finger and your middle finger. Because there's been several times in some of the slapping pieces that I've done where I've had to use the middle finger in addition to the index finger. But you never want to do them at the same time. I made the mistake initially when I was learning this of doing them both together. And really what ended up happening was the, the flick would start with the middle finger and then right after it would be the index finger. And on each string, what would be happening was the middle finger would get the string vibrating and the index finger would come in and cut the string. You get that sort of like nasty nail tone of a string vibrating you stopping it with the nail and then and then the index finger wouldn't even really i wouldn't really get much juice out of out of the note so make sure when you're doing the flick you're only doing the index finger or the middle finger usually it's going to be the index finger but get comfortable with the middle finger too the next thing i'll probably work on is doing a chord and then doing a flick slap You could try to then separate the bass and melody with some accompanying chords in the middle and do the flick at the same time. Holy crap, that's a lot, buddy. Can you do it? Dang, that was hard. I almost messed it up. So that's the gist of the technique, but there's still more. It's not just about getting the flick sound, getting the slap sound, and getting the notes to ring out that you want to ring out. But also, one of the things you'll find that's really important when it comes to this technique is making it so certain strings don't ring out that you don't want to ring out. And there's two ways to accomplish that. The first way is kind of the more obvious way, and that has to do with your right hand. This will happen a lot where you're playing a chord and There'll be a certain note, usually like at the top of the chord that you don't want to ring out. So how do you handle that? Well, what you can actually do is sort of do a shallower flick. So instead of going all the way, so here I, so I have this really high, this E, which doesn't go along with the chord, right? I want just this. And I don't want this to ring out. So what you gotta do, and, and this is pretty tricky. So I'm gonna use my right hand and do kind of a shallower flick, a flick in which the index finger is not extending all the way. Okay, it's gonna stay kind of curled up, but it, you're still gonna have a little bit of motion like that because you still have to get these strings to ring out. Now, I'll probably mess this up. I'm just gonna show you my first try doing it um, because it is, it is pretty tricky. Trying to get that high E string. So this is what I ran into initially. Like, how do I make how do I make a melodic note ring out in a chord and not have a higher note ring out that is not the melody? This happens all the time. And the secret is in your left hand. It's in the muting of the left hand. So let's take that previous chord example. And instead of worrying about doing a shallow flick with the right hand, I'm just gonna use my left hand to find a way to mute that high E string. So check it out. I'm playing this chord, right? And I don't want this string to ring out, okay? What I'm gonna do is take the left hand index finger and make it so this part of the finger right here is actually laying slightly on the E string so that it, so that it mutes it. So check it out. Look at that. I can flick as hard as I want and I can elongate my finger as much as I want and I'm not gonna have that E note ring out. And if you listen to any of the songs in which I'm I'm doing slaps 
I'm I'm making melodic notes ring out, but there are notes above those melodic notes that you'd think that would be ringing out that aren't ringing. I guarantee you 99% of the time, it's my left hand finding ways to mute those strings. And it's not always with the index fingers. Let's just say for example, you wanted to mute the high E string, but for some reason you couldn't use the index finger. In this case, you actually could. You could also slap another finger on that you're not using and use that to mute. So that happens all over the place. Um, and unfortunately, it's piece dependent. It depends on what's going on in that particular piece at that particular time, which will inform which finger, if any, that you can use to mute strings you don't want ringing out. Having said that though, there has never been a situation in any of the stuff that I've learned where I wasn't able to do a slap and play the melody and mute strings that I didn't want ringing out. So you gotta get creative, bro. So that's it, dog. That's how you slap like Sam. Um, make sure you give uh, give this some patience when you first learn it. Um, we're so used to, as classical guitarists, we're so used to like playing with your right hand in this very specific way. You've probably been doing it for years. Um, and then you, you add something like slapping and it's like a whole new thing. Um, it's not actually as hard as it feels when you start off. Just remember that the slapping is something that you've never really done before and you're like a total beginner at that thing so you're starting from the ground up which is kind of cool you, you don't get to usually have that experience of being a beginner again uh in in guitar or or anything you've done for a while so bro just remember one of the greatest ways that you can work on slapping is a, one of my favorite exercises for slapping is slapping that subscribe button and slapping that like button if you wanna get even better at slapping, or if you wanna be the ultimate slapper, you go ahead and slap that bell. Just take that hand, twist that wrist, move that form, and get those strings smacking on that dang fretboard. Okay, the peace out, bro.